All right, hello. Thanks to everyone who's already created and submitted one of these loopy systems diagrams. Uh, I just got really interested uh, messing with everybody's diagrams that they had put in the discussion forum so far. These things get super complicated, super fast. And these are after all, massive simplifications of what's really going out there, uh, going on out there in the real world. Um, so, you know, if one of our take home messages could be from uh, working on these systems diagrams and learning about the carbon cycle, it's that it's just so massively complex, right? So any model that tries to represent it has to also be extremely complex uh, if we're gonna get any kind of good predictions out of it. What I'm gonna do here in this video is uh, build out some part of a systems diagram to represent uh, some aspects of the carbon cycle. I'm gonna try to teach you a little bit about Loopy on the way. Um, You'll notice I'll be stopping and starting the video a bunch so things will appear and disappear on the screen. But the first thing I'm gonna do, this is always good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose the text option over here and I'm gonna give my whole diagram a label. Uh, I'm gonna call it the, um, I'm just gonna call it the carbon cycle for now. All right. Uh, all right, here's my first version. Uh, of the systems diagram. And it's super simple so far, right? I'm gonna try to start simple and add some layers of complexity, see if I can keep everything accurate. Notice I've got on one side, trees. On the other side, atmospheric carbon. Uh, I have a bunch of lines connecting them. Up here, I've got photosynthesis. I actually put two lines for photosynthesis and only one for respiration. I'll tell you why. Um, trees, you know, and all other uh, plants, can be both a source of carbon through their respiration, they actually release carbon back to the environment, but they are also a sink for carbon, meaning they take carbon out of the atmosphere and store it in their tissues, whether it's wood, leaves, uh, stems, etc. cetera. Uh, they store that carbon in their tissues. And on balance, healthy trees are more of a sink, right? They take out more carbon from the atmosphere than they release. So, um, we're gonna, we're gonna let this systems diagram run. It's pretty simple, right? So if I say more trees, watch those arrows go, right? Atmospheric carbon comes down, uh, which makes sense, right? If trees are a net sink for carbon, if we have more trees, we should have less atmospheric carbon. Let's say we have less trees, all right? We bring those down, watch our arrows, and we see atmospheric carbon go up. All right, I've added a couple more nodes to my diagram here, a couple more circles and arrows. Uh, and another feature that exists in Loopy is the, the shorter your arrows are, the faster the effect is gonna be seen. Um, so I've, I've added a couple things. Down here, I've added fossil carbon, right? So think in our carbon cycle, think about all the different reservoirs. This would be all the carbon currently stored in fossil fuels, coal, natural gas, oil. Um, and so by burning fossil fuels, right, that fossil carbon goes down. We're actually moving carbon out of the fast, sorry, out of the slow carbon cycle into the fast one, right? So we'll see atmospheric carbon go up, right? And then I've put a connection over here to global temperature, since this is uh, ultimately one of the major things we're concerned about. Um, the greenhouse effect is what connects those, right? As atmospheric carbon goes up, global temperature is gonna go up as well. So let's, let's run this thing and see what happens. I'm actually gonna hit the down arrow on fossil carbon, right? Because we're removing carbon from that reservoir, right? We see atmospheric carbon go up, takes a little longer on this one. We see global temperature go up as well. All right, I've added one more node, uh, which would be the oceans over here. And notice I have both a plus and a minus arrow. Uh, we're talking about air-sea gas exchange. I'm going back to that diagram um, I included at the top of our discussion forum. And so in principle, right, there should be pretty even flows of carbon between the atmosphere and the oceans, right? So let, let's see if my uh, diagram models that. I'm gonna say, well, what if ocean carbon goes up, right? We're seeing actually atmospheric carbon stays balanced and it works to actually stabilize global temperature as well. So in principle, oceans should be a big carbon sink um, and they should work to balance carbon between the atmospheric oceanic stores uh, which are actually gonna help to regulate global temperature. All right, I've added a node for soil carbon down here. I've connected it to trees uh, because as trees grow and photosynthesize, some of their carbon eventually gets transferred into the soil. Uh, and then I've added uh, a line for respiration and decomposition from the soil, which then returns the carbon to the atmosphere. Um, 
I've made these lines a bit longer because sometimes those relationships uh, take longer to show up. So let, let's run this. Let's say we, we have more trees in the world, right? We're watching atmospheric carbon go down, soil carbon go up. Eventually it's returned to the atmosphere. Temperature had come down, but then temperature stabilizes, right? So we're still seeing uh, on the whole stabilizing negative feedback loops so far, right? Through trees, soil, and the ocean can all be stabilizing uh, factors in a global climate system, right? The only one we've seen so far that truly and quickly spikes our temperature, right, would be uh, burning fossil fuels. Although I just used a down arrow uh, to show that we're releasing carbon from those fossil reservoirs, right? We clearly see global temperature go up. All right, I've added a couple more things, and this is actually where I'm going to end because this is starting to make my head hurt a little bit. I've added some feedbacks between global temperature and some of our major carbon sinks. Um, and so one effect of global temperature going up can be climate impacts on ecosystems, right? It can damage ecosystems that aren't adapted uh, to this new climate. So we're going to say actually that uh, as global temperature goes up, we might see the amount of trees come down. The other feedback that I've added is ocean acidification. We know that as global temperature goes up and more uh, carbon dioxide um, dissolves in oceans, it causes the pH to go down or to acidify, which actually compromises the ability of the ocean to sequester more carbon. Um, and so I'm going to I'm going to run this a couple times and we'll see where it goes for the moment. I'm going to leave out uh, the whole fossil fuel thing. We're just going to start with trees. I'm going to say, well, what if our overall number of trees go up? Right. What if what if we're doing some reforestation? Right. We're seeing impacts on atmospheric carbon coming down slightly. Global temperature goes down. Right. We see impacts on oceans. Um, but I think that if I let this thing run, it's actually going to, you know, things are going to fluctuate. But we're going to see things uh, remain within a range of stability, right? So we might call this a dynamic equilibrium. I'm going to reset my diagram here, and I'm going to kick off the whole system down here in the fossil carbon realm. Remember, when I hit down on fossil carbon, it actually means we are removing carbon from those fossil reservoirs. We're burning it as fossil fuels, and we're putting it into the atmosphere. So let's see what happens to the whole system. Uh, when we kick it off by extracting a bunch of fossil carbon and burning it and releasing it into the atmosphere. All right, we see atmospheric carbon go up. We see global temperature go up, right? We see the ability of both oceans and trees uh, to sequester carbon. We see that ability compromised. Um, we're still seeing atmospheric carbon rising. We're seeing global temperature rise, right? We're seeing uh, the oceans and trees, that uh, amount of carbon stored going down. We're even seeing soil carbon go down. We see some fluctuation in temperature uh, and atmospheric carbon, but on the whole, we're seeing big spikes uh, in temperature. All right. Hopefully this was useful to you. Um, you know, we get too much more complicated than this, and it's hard to really be tracking all those effects. But this is a powerful tool. A um, couple things you've learned here. Multiple arrows is going to represent a stronger relationship. Um, adding labels to your arrows is super helpful if you're trying to help your uh, viewer or your reader understand what's going on. And a longer arrow is going to mean uh, more of a delayed effect uh, between the nodes. So um, maybe work on yours a little bit if you if you see some opportunities for improvement. If you haven't done one yet, uh, make one. Keep it simple if you like, uh, but just try to show what you know about the carbon cycle so far. All right. Thanks for watching.